just gonna bolt this down, put a generic tension on these, which will probably be about 50 pounds on these, and then 60 on my ARPs. Um, these are only just going in now dry because I will put some grease under them. I'll back them off in a second. I just want to make sure the roaster shaft spins. Um, check my thrust. That's getting a little tight, but that could also be my oil. Do you know what the, um, did you measure up the, the names and the... Not yet. Is it, is, it, is it just like a generic size on these TRD ones? They just make them all the same? This think? would be um, OEM, like, this would be an OEM size. Um, it would be the same as whatever crankshaft or whatever tolerance they've got in, like, say, the book spec for um, 4A. Is a, from the book spec, like, you can get different tolerances. The like tolerance is 1,000, top and bottom. Yeah. Top and bottom, 1,000. So, you've got 1,000 leeway, and then the bearings. So, the bearings that I've got... Fuck's sake. I have to put the studs in first. The bearings that I've got are just a... Um, a standard size but no extra clearance so it's like just uh you can get like uh, x series bearings which are one thou extra clearance and then when you're trying to target a specific clearance you put in half a shell of x and then half a shell of normal standard and then that oh, way so like on each side like yeah okay. so you, you, you normally when you're trying to achieve a t certain target clearance um you buy two sets of bearings right. you buy x's and non-x's and has that, has that got anything like, there's no issue with, say, where it comes together? Like the seam, the 22 bearings, there's no like... Nah, edge. nah. It's too small. Well, the, so the thing is with bearings is, you, they're not, um, you, your hold size isn't round. It's uh, elliptic, like it looks like a... So you've got, um, so the, the vertical, the vertical oil clearance is what you're looking for. The vertical oil clearance, and we'll get wider on the sides. And as the crankshaft spins over, it uses the clearance on the sides of the bearings to, to create like an oil dam. And then the oil dam is there as a, as a reservoir for the shaft spinning through the oil into the vertical clearance. Right. So your vertical clearance is gonna be somewhere around like two thou, uh, two, two and a few tenths thou clearance. Wow. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna, this is still a trial fit. So I'm just gonna bolt this down um, somewhat dry. I mean, lube on my bearings. I'm just going to check that it spins. I'm going to check my thrust because if I need to address it, when I pull it apart and I put the, the shells back in, I'll quickly measure it. But at least now I know what my thrust is so I don't have to then pull my thrust apart and file down my thrusts yeah. if, if I don't have enough. So rather than do all my vertical oil clearance, put it all together, have no thrust, pull it apart, I'd rather just do my thrust now and go, okay, the thrust is set, put the thrust bearings to the side. Now do my vertical oil clearance to confirm that that's, that's the right size measure my big end size, make sure that's intolerance. Um, my Carrillo rods and ACL bearings, they're gonna measure up fine. So I can double check those, but um, I'm pretty confident that they're gonna be bang on. So zero, three, zero, three. Perfect. So my thrust is good, so I don't have to touch that. All right guys, so if you watch a lot of other engine builders, they'll show you how to measure with a dial bore gauge. I don't own a dial bore gauge, nor do I need one. Um, when you work as an engine reconditioner or machinist, you very quickly um, figure out that an easy and accurate method that doesn't require a lot of time is an inside micrometer. This is an inside pen micrometer. So basically, very simple tool. The distance between here and here is the size indicated there. So right now, at zero, this would be exactly one inch. So uh, I'm gonna measure the inside hole size then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and reference that to an outside micrometer. Soyuz or Mishitoyo um, Japanese micrometers, two to three, and then I've got a one to two inch here. So I'll be measuring my vertical oil clearance off my crankshaft using these tools. So inside size, now with a bearing mounted in the, into the engine block, I'll be measuring the vertical oil, oil size there, which then I'll be going back and measuring my crankshaft diameter. That will give me my vertical oil clearance. I'm looking for about two thou to two and a half thou on the mains and probably about 2,000 on the big ends. Cool. So being a bearing inside here, normally you would just measure the tunnel. Because it's a tunnel, it's, it's quite sturdy, it's cast iron. Being alloy, soft metal, you really wanna be careful with your feel. So if you haven't used one of these before, I don't recommend doing it on a bearing first. Learn in a bore, because these can definitely damage the bearing. Once you get a feel for it over time, you start to, um, yeah, you'd be able to do it with a bearing in there, no problem. Um, I've been using these for years, so. 
we'll just go through the process. So it's too small, so I'm going to have to come up. So just give it a few turns, still a bit too small. It's a pretty quick process when you know the feel. Too big, come down. Too big. Too small. Come up a thou. No. Nope. Come up another thou. No. Nope. One thou more. No. Nope. So I'm just coming up one thou at a time. That's getting close. So the idea is you move side to side and then push through. So I went one thou too big, so I'm going to come down half a thou now. That's my size. So all I'm doing is anchoring on the bottom of that tool. I'm moving side to side. I feel it give a slight amount of resistance as I pass it through the, the range. Now I'm going to check the back side to make sure it's the same as the front. Anchor at the bottom, move it side to side, and it's a bit different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a size on the front side of the bearing first and then I'm going to measure the back. If it's within a few tenths of a thou, there's no, I can't do much about that. The cap is obviously laying over a little bit. If it's within a few tenths, it's fine. If it's half a thou, we've got problems. We're going to have to um, tunnel correct the block. So let's measure this size, see where we're at. So this is my two to three inch mic. I'm just going to set it with a set piece. So if I go through and run the set piece through, running that through at zero on the gauge, that means she's at zero. Temperature hasn't affected this. So now I'm just gonna put my set piece, oh, we're too small. We've gotta to go to the smaller gauge. That's gonna be for our crankshaft, I bet. So let's just double check this one. It's gonna bring this down, move the set piece through. It's at zero. The feel that I'm feeling with the resistance of this is what that size is. So the feel that I have to match on this is the feel that I have to match on the bearing for the size to be a comparison. So let's run this out. See what size we've got. Bit more. Okay. So I'm not looking at my size, I'm looking for a feel I'm not looking at that size whatsoever. That's the key. Okay, no, a bit too tight. Oh, it's a bit too tight. That's it, that's my size. Okay, now I'm gonna actually look at and count and see what I got. So we've got 1.875, give me a pen, 90, 91 and a half, 1.89. One and a half. Okay, so one point eight nine one and a half. That's our that's our vertical oil clearance. So now I'm just going to go through and measure my crankshaft. It's a little bit tight on this bench space. So I'm just going to back off the micrometer because these edges are quite sharp and I don't want to damage the shaft. So I'm just going to come down here, not touch the shaft, anchor off the bottom, tighten in the screw. Move it side to side, a little bit of a wiggle, put on my lock come off. Okay, so what have we got? So now we're under 15. So we are 75, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 89 and a half, 1.8895. So what's our, what's our clearance? What's our difference? Two thou. So 1.889 and a half to 1.8915. That's two thou. So that's good. We've got two thou vertical oil clearance, that's fine. We're gonna put the crankshaft in now, tension this all down. I'm gonna put 50 pounds on my uh, factory bolts and I'm gonna put 60 pounds on the ARP studs. Uh, and then that will get our crankshaft in the block. Uh, and then we'll go from there. Yeah.
the size on my, I'll double check the thrust again. Make sure we're in the ballpark. Man, you build so many 4 why don't you get one of those ARP ones that are like tapered? Because uh, they're only certain sizes. 81 and a half would be the size that I'd use because I use it so often, but um, I've been doing... It's hard to get that small because ARP generally just make them for big V8 stuff. So it's hard, it's like, it's used to be hard to get them in 86 mil, which is a standard size for like Nissan. Yeah. 86, 86, 5, 81, they just, they don't do them. They might do them now. They do. Do they? Uh, yeah. Ring cones? Yeah, so we ended up doing the same thing with the ARP stretch gauge with part one of my 7A build. There it is. So the reason I do one at a time is because I can't set the zero on both bolts at different. So that's why I do one bolt at a time. Yep. So I always pull it off and then I put it back on to make sure it does go back to zero. Zero it again, so it's confirmed. Right, zero. Stretch this down. That feels like six. We'll see what she end up being. How did my arm tension wrench work? Ah, pretty good, five and a half. We'll leave it at that, how about that, eh? Let's see how she spins. Feels nice there and well. Do we have thrust? Yes, we have thrust. So one of the things you want to check for on, especially aftermarket crankshafts and aftermarket rods is they have thrust. So see, we've got a small amount of thrust because obviously the crankshaft swells, the rod swells with heat. If that was to lock up on the thrust, she's going to seize. So everything has to have clearance. So spin her over, doesn't hit on the block. Well, it shouldn't because it didn't before. Feels pretty good. Oh yeah, sounds nice, beautiful, that's one in. Alright guys, so four pistons and rods are in the block. She's all clean. I've still yet to grub screw the crankshaft. We're just gonna cycle it over now. She already, we've done it a bit off camera, but she's perfect. Let's have a look. Feels really good. That's the thing is you can tell the tension yeah. on the motor when it's, when it's just right. Yeah, so what I do is, you would have seen in Nico's build, um, I always put the crankshaft in first. I cycle the crank looking for any tight spots. Um, obviously you confirm all your, you can confirm all the bearing clearances you like. At, at some point you can confirm your crankshaft straight, but then how do you know if your tunnel is perfectly straight? Well, you can't until you put the block, have a crankshaft in the block and spin it. And if she spins like a top, well, she's clear. She's got, she's straight and it's clean and it's, it's nice. If there's a tight spot, you've got something wrong. So crankshaft in first, no oil pump, no rear main seal. If it wouldn't account on this engine because it's dry sumped, but spin the crank once that's confirmed with thrust, we move on to piston one, and then you get a bit of resistance on every single cylinder you do. So piston one should give a certain amount of feedback, like uh, resistance, and then obviously cylinder two, it should double, it should triple, and then it should be, it should be the same, more resistance across every cylinder you put in. If there's any sort of tight spots, you always will have, it will get hard through the center as they're all through the halfway through their stroke, and then as it goes to dwell, so when the pistons hit top dead center, it gets really easy to turn the crankshaft in the dwell section. So I can turn that really easy, but then it start, as soon as it starts to get to where the pistons are actually in their stroke, it gets hard and that's the ring tension. So we come over to top dead center on this cylinder, easy to rock again. And then if I try and turn it, it gets about there before my hand starts slipping. So it's exactly the same as the other side. So she cycles over nice. This thing is ready to make some power. So that'll be it for this video guys. If you liked the video, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. 
And if you'd like to see part three, where we fit the dry sump and Matt just keeps on dropping knowledge, hit that notification bell and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Yeah, no, we're well, believe it or not, we've been recording yeah. everything. Nico, Nico's not gonna, Nico's not gonna put this online, huh? <laughs>